Hey everyone, welcome to TEDxCMU's completely virtual Innovation Expo, where we're going to be chatting with some local innovators from Pittsburgh and just catching up with them. Today we have a very special guest, Tom from I Am Robotics. So let's just get right into it. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your company. Yeah, hi Niharika, thanks for having us today. It's a real pleasure. Um, so I Am Robotics is a, uh, a warehouse automation company. We we create autonomous mobile robots for transporting and moving goods around warehouses, e-commerce uh, fulfillment centers, uh, buy online, pick up and store operations and retail. Our robots are able to manipulate objects through computer vision. Uh, they can drive around a, a store or a dark store, see items for themselves, grab them, pick them up, collect them. And then we also have mobile robot applications that are used for transporting items in a facility. So these are items in cases or totes. And um, we sell those robots to customers working on, as I mentioned, automating all of those fulfillment operations for e-commerce. Very cool. So it seems like you kind of have your hands in all of the different processes involving um, automation of the e-commerce uh, uh, system, kind of. So where are you guys located right now? Yeah, so we're currently, we have two locations in Pittsburgh. Uh, we were originally in Sewickley. Uh, we still have a location there. It was about 20 minutes outside of the city. And then we're moving into a brand new uh, state-of-the-art test center and headquarters. Uh, it's, a, it's an innovation showcase center, really. Uh, and that's right on Robotics Row uh, in Pittsburgh, uh, in close to the, the Strip District in Lawrenceville where you'd find a lot of the other robotics companies. Um, CMU, National Robotics Engineering Center, for instance, is right next door to our new location. So uh, we have a brand new space and we're really excited to, to begin our work there. Super cool. So what are some of the interesting facilities that you guys are going to have in this brand new office? Yeah, I think that the really fun part about it is we're going to be able to effectively mock up a full warehouse operation. So uh, being able to simulate pick, pack, uh, ship, receive, receive, pick, pack, ship operations, those kinds of things, uh, using our robots to both, as I said, uh, pick items, manipulate items, collect them, and transport them within our, our own facility. So it gives our engineers all the tools that they need, many robots to work with, uh, you know, run lots of different tests, uh, run highly accelerated lifecycle tests, continuing continuous integration and testing of our software. And then we also have various development cells. So as our engineers are working on new technologies, so they could be developing with one or two robots at a time in one of these test cells that simulate kind of like a, a miniature slice of the warehouse where they can run new features, um, they can develop new machine learning algorithms and so forth to improve our robot accuracy and speed and those kinds of things. So we really have all of the tools that we need with this new uh, headquarters, including beautiful 10,000 square foot office space, which is really exciting uh, for our employees to kind of get in and have a, a fresh look and feel for the company. So we're really excited about all of that. Nice, okay. So we just kind of talked a little bit about Robotics Row. Um, does I Am Robotics have competitors on Robotics Row? And if you do, what makes you guys different? Yeah, we definitely have competitors nationally uh, across the country and worldwide, but we don't have any direct competitors in Pittsburgh. Uh, the other companies working on similar technologies in Pittsburgh are very complementary to IAM Robotics. So I can mention a few, for instance, Bossa Nova Robotics is uh, working with uh, robots to scan inventory in retail stores. So that, for instance, Walmart they're working with, or the robots drive around and scan shelves and look for things that are out of stock. Uh, there's also Seagrid in town, which has been around for quite a while now. And they work with moving larger goods around the warehouse. So this is transporting pallets and so forth over long distances in very large facilities um, in various kinds of warehouses and, and manufacturing centers. Um, and then you also have ASON, which ma manufactures autonomous mobile robots. Uh, and they're doing a lot of work in healthcare and manufacturing as well. So uh, all of these all of these technologies are very complementary to IM Robotics, and we're specifically focused on the fulfillment operations. So actually, 
transporting uh, materials for fulfillment. So these are smaller uh, quantities of goods. We're either picking up items at the, the piece level, grabbing individual items, or transporting cases or totes of items around the facility with our smaller bots. Do you think that you could ever potentially partner with one of these um, other companies that are conveniently right there on Robotics Row? Is that something that we, you we, we really do. We really do. And as, as all these companies kind of grow up uh, and move beyond the startup stage and, and we start to connect, um, you know, different applications together and, and as our applications expand, it becomes, um, there, there's a point at which our robots would very nicely interface with theirs. Um, for instance, uh, if you look at Bossa Nova, it makes sense that, um, you know, as the robots scan the shelf and see out of stock items, uh, an application for IAM Robotics might be that we then create robots that can bring goods to the shelf for replenishment. Uh, so as soon as a, ro a robot were to find that something was out of stock, you can have a robot very quickly go to the back room and potentially pull some materials uh, onto the retail store floor. So we do think that there are real applications, as, as, as I mentioned, the companies grow up and expand beyond their current um, product offerings. Very cool. Um, so we kind of just talked about Robotics Row in Pittsburgh. Um, speaking of Pittsburgh, what are some of the impacts that you guys are making in the local Pittsburgh community? Yeah, um, so we're obviously hiring a lot of engineers and bringing them into the city. Uh, we're also going to be working with some of our, as you might know, Iron Robotics is, is kind of a, a CMU spin out. And uh, so we do a lot of work with the, the entrepreneurship groups uh, at CMU, um, giving talks, kind of coaching other entrepreneurs in the Pittsburgh startup community about um, just giving advice, what works well, what doesn't work, those kinds of things, how to fundraise. Um, we are also potentially working with um, new partners uh, for some, some charity work, potentially, to have our robots help out. Um, we have some concepts at the, to have our robots work at the food bank, for instance. Uh, for some annual events that we might do and, and show the benefits of technology helping out the community. So there's lots of things going on and, and we have the support of all of our, um, our local uh, leaders. Um, uh, had a chance to meet the mayor this past, uh, past few months and uh, before uh, coronavirus and, and uh, they're very excited about us moving into the city and about us, you know, potentially doing these other activities around the community. Nice. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about your product now. Um, how is your company going to revolutionize e-commerce in your opinion? Yeah, I think that the, the big challenges in e-commerce are around um, just replacing the amount of labor that's required in the industry. If you think about how hard of a problem it is to fulfill all the goods in the supply chain for, for everyone in the country. People um, in the US, for instance, they spend about 40 billion hours a year shopping for their goods. So that's effectively fulfillment work that they're doing for free. And when you move all of that work online, it's actually the equivalent of 20 million full-time jobs, of which there aren't nearly enough people uh, in the country to, to meet that demand. So the end result is as we shop more and more through e-commerce, we have to automate more and more to be able to keep up with the demand because there just there isn't the manual labor pool available that it would take to actually do that automation. So for for us, I am Robotics is about being able to um, take the manual touches that would otherwise be required and hand that off to robots and to allow people to use these robots as a tool to scale more, right? To achieve more throughput and volume uh, to meet the demands of uh, the growing consumer demand. Right. I think that um, making this automated is kind of one level of innovation. Um, what do you think are some future levels of innovation or like newer technology trends that could possibly emerge in this AMR space? Yeah, we're seeing more cloud connectivity of robots. So being able to uh, gather all this data of all these robots working in the field, um, the video, the mapping and localization information, watching their performance, their throughput, sending all of that up in, information up to the cloud 
uh, for recording and, and machine learning is important, but also remote monitoring. And so we can provide our customers with additional support and visibility into what's going on in their in their centers and their fulfillment centers. Um, and I think as we as we as the technology matures around AI, deep learning, perception, and so forth, we're going to see a broader applicability of autonomous manipulation. And so what I mean by that is is basically robots being able to see more types of items and to manipulate a wider spectrum of items in the warehouse or in an e-commerce fulfillment center. So not just grabbing um, bottles or boxes of things, but being able to handle anything. You know, it could be um, it could be teddy bears or it could be you know office stationery or what have you. Some of those things are very um, difficult to grasp today with current technology because of their size and shape and the complexity of their size and shape and recognizing it. So I think the technology will expand robots to be more versatile in what they can handle. Um, and that's really going to improve the overall economics of, of putting robots out there. So um, talk me through kind of how each of your products can make the different parts of warehouse management a little bit more manageable and efficient. Um, maybe walk through a, a little bit of your product suite. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have uh, an AMR, Autonomous Mobile Robot, it's called Bolt. That is effectively the base foundation for all, all of our technology. So Bolt is able to navigate around completely um, by itself. So it uses SLAM, simultaneous localization and mapping. And that's basically using LiDAR sensors to look at the surrounding environment, uh, understand where you are within that environment in that broader map, and then navigate autonomously through it and navigate around obstacles. So warehouses, as you know, are constantly changing environments. Uh, people are driving forklifts around and there's people walking around and uh, pallets being put in different locations. So the robots need to be able to respond to that intelligently. That means driving around all these obstacles, being safe, especially around people. And so it's a very collaborative environment where people and robots are working together. And that's all the technology that we're building into Bolt to provide that base foundation. And then on top of Bolt, we've built um, several different applications. So we have Swift, which is our autonomous piece picking robot, and that's able to drive around a retail-like environment, uh, static shelving, items placed on shelving, and the robot will drive and collect material. So it's kind of almost like an autonomous shopper if you will. It's able to drive up and down aisles. They will see different items and it can collect those goods. Often we collect those goods into a batch. So, um, you know, some person might order one or two items online and it doesn't make sense to send a robot or a person out to, to grab just a couple of items. So you, you aggregate multiple orders at the same time, collect all those goods, bring them into a batch to a sortation process where they're separated out into individual orders and shipped out to customers. That's Swift, and then we our newest versions of Swift that we're working on are going to be uh, being used for tote handling applications. So this is, as I mentioned, sortation. Those items are sorted into individual orders. They're often sorted into boxes or totes where the minute they go down to a pack process. And so instead of having to have a person carry those boxes or totes to that packing uh, process, we can have our Swift robot then take uh, the full tote, bring it to the pack station and, and replenish that with an empty tote for new items to be sorted into. So it's expanding the breadth um, throughout the receive, pick, pack, uh, shift operation of what we can do. And so our robots are, are starting to expand into all of those different um, sweet spots. So are these like components of like a bigger idea, like clients who are interested in your products can like pick and choose which ones work for them or is it more of like a bundle set? Everything comes together. No, it's very much um, a pick and choose suite. So we work with a variety of integrators that can uh, work directly with clients to figure out what's the best design for their warehouse, how many robots they need, which robots make sense uh, for their operation. And often those are complemented with other technologies in the warehouse. So it could be complemented with an automated storage and retrieval machine, or uh, just conveyor. Oftentimes you have conveyor points around a facility. So having robots interface and dock with those conveyors to pick up materials and, and drop off materials makes a lot of sense. So yeah, we work with those integrators to, to define the best solution 
for our customers, and Iron Robotics' job is to provide really quality autonomous robots that are reliable, have a lot of um, solid uptime and productivity uh, rates, and then we also do the remote monitoring and support. So as we're as those robots are working, we're we're constantly watching them to make sure that they have peak performance. And then we have predictive analytics, you know, that we're going to be building into our cloud software that allows them to uh, basically diagnose ahead of time if there's going to be any issues or the robots aren't able to keep up with rising demand and so forth. So we can inform the customers on how to improve their operation. Wow, it really sounds like there was a lot of thought put into how to make this a very like <laughs> seamless kind of system altogether. It's been many years, yes, in development. That's so awesome. Um, so let's flash back a couple years, maybe. Um, how long have you guys been in business, and how did you guys how did you guys get your start? Yeah, we founded the company way back in uh, 2012, and I think we got started full time in earnest around 2013, 2014. Um, so we were transitioning from our regular day jobs into this new startup that we had created. We raised some funding uh, from folks in Pittsburgh called Innovation Works. They were really the first ones to help us get our start. Um, before that, we were at CMU, and uh, we launched our first product, uh, you know, in uh, which was Swift uh, in 2016, uh, where uh, we really got to work with Swift at a first pilot site in 2017. So it took several years to develop the initial core technology because what we were trying to do was having items actually see and manipulated things on a shelf and so forth was was brand new at the time. Uh, it required new hardware technology. For computing, it required um, new software technology. So, uh, you know, all of the advancements in deep learning and machine learning were happening right around that time. Um, and so that's really how we got our start. And now we're starting to, as I mentioned, expand the scope of what we can do with our robots into being able to handle more material, different processes around the warehouse and e commerce fulfillment center. So flash forward to now, I suppose. Um, what are some of the companies that you guys are currently working with? Yeah, so um, most of them are still confidential because, because of kind of the advanced technology nature of what we do. Uh, but one that I can talk about that we're very excited about is, is kind of our first large scale deployment of our Swift robots at a company called AS Watson. And so this is going to be an overseas deployment in the Netherlands. Um, AS Watson is kind of like a, you can imagine them like a Walgreens, if you will. Um, so a lot of health and beauty, pharmacy um, type operations across Europe and Asia. And they're kind of the, the biggest player in the, on those continents. What we do with them is uh, about half of one of their new flagship distribution centers, or, I'm sorry, fulfillment centers, uh, that's uh, fulfilling online orders, about half of the items in that center are going to be picked by our robot. So um, it's, it's a really exciting thing because this is the first time we start to see a broad scale deployment of our technology and uh, fully bring the original vision of the company to life. Cool. Um, so let's say that a company wants to work with you, but they already have kind of a system in place. Um, how can your products work with existing automation systems um, that might already exist within someone who wants to work with you guys? Yeah, uh, really good question. It's it's actually um, it's it's a complicated process, really, to figure out and do the detailed industrial engineering of what is the optimal layout of the warehouse and where does it make the most sense to put robots versus classic technology. So, um, for instance, so, so our robots are good at moving kind of what we call the long tail inventory. So this is all the slow moving products, you know, the uh, the the weird hair dye colors and so forth that that people use from time to time, but aren't picked on a daily basis. Um, those are the kinds of things that make sense to store away on shelving. And so um, our robots would be really good at, at going to retrieve those things. Um, but some goods are better off in you know, a large carousel system or uh, automated shuttle system. And so we, again, uh, we work with our clients and our, our integrators to, to design the optimal setup and, and all of that is being done to achieve the best return on investment for our customers and decrease their initial capital outlay that they have to spend to be able to bring in half the kinds of automation and robotic technology that they want uh, for the future to achieve that, that broader 
um, throughput and, and meet those rising consumer demands. So what is something exciting that your company is working on right now, perhaps? Yeah, um, there's a lot of things. I, I think that probably the most exciting thing is the, uh, the broader cloud connectivity that, that we're, we're building in so that we can, as I mentioned, we have all of these different applications. Uh, and, and so all these robots are going to use the same kind of cloud backend infrastructure that uh, our people are going to be able to use to monitor the robots and, and optimize them. But then also, really, I mean, uh, uh, we're, we're launching that new mobile robot that's, that's the foundation of all of our technology later this uh, or early in 2021. And so Bolt is going to allow us to uh, um, really broaden that scope of different applications in the warehouse. So there's, it's all exciting. It's all exciting. The, the new deployment, the new technology, and the new product. So this means, I assume, that you guys are still working, still creating, still innovating um, this summer. And for viewers, this, summer's, this uh, interview is being recorded during the summer of 2020, which is in the middle of a pandemic. So how are you guys still working and still innovating during this pandemic? Yeah, the, the team has been really amazing through this time. Um, we've worked together to, to keep each other safe, keep our family safe. Uh, during this time, uh, we were building robots from home, actually. Some of, some of our folks in manufacturing were assembling wire harnesses on the dining room table. Uh, we, uh, we had a lot of people working from uh, their home, just programming robots, uh, developing simulators so that we can simulate operations in lieu of not being able to get to work when we were quarantined. Um, and then as, as the summer progressed, then we started um, you know, allowing people to slowly get back to work. Um, we've, we've used this new warehouse operations, new uh, building in Lawrenceville uh, to allow our folks to work in a, a very socially distanced setting um, with the proper personal protection equipment and so forth. But, so now they're kind of able to get in and, and develop in kind of these test cells. Uh, it's been challenging. It's been, it's been very challenging to get out there and meet customers and bring them in. So we've been doing a lot of, you know, remote work on the sales side. Um, but it's been, it's been really enlightening to see how productive we can be from home. So I was really happy to see how, how well the team pulled through this and, and was able to, to be pretty productive in light of not being able to have all the resources that they previously had available. For sure. I mean, it sounds super challenging, but it looks like you guys are able to sort of come together even though everyone is remote, and even though um, this is a very tumultuous time, that's incredible to see this kind of work get in, getting done and um, coming out into the world. Um, and similarly, kind of like, um, I think in a post-COVID world, there's no doubt that commerce will become bigger and even more digital. So how do you see IM Robotics contributing to this new future? Yeah, it's really just continuing to work with our, with our customers customers and our business partners um, to expand the, the breadth of the kinds of operations that we can do, uh, have our robots take part in. Um, as I mentioned, there just isn't the labor available. It, it cannot be done with classic manual processes. Um, there, there, there's not enough time in the day for people to do all the work that's required for order fulfillment for other people. So it's imperative that we build out those efficiencies to handle that, that growing demand. And COVID has really changed those dynamics, right? So uh, the supply chain doesn't have um, the luxury of being able to have their people work from home, right? They, when there's a pandemic, e-commerce is now essential. It's a, it's a critical fun, function for our economy to continue and sustain itself throughout these, these difficult times. And so it's, it's, it's a double hit for them. They have more demand at the same time. They potentially have a reduced labor availability because of something like a pandemic. So that's mean, that means that they have no choice. They have to look at automation technologies to allow a smaller number of people to meet a greater demand. And uh, I think if anything, COVID has accelerated uh, the, that observation and that, that realization. And so um, while they're all very busy, you know, meeting this, this, this spike in demand right now and it's created a lot of uncertainty, it means that the strategy is changing long-term, that they're going to look 
more towards robots and new technologies and automation to be able to, to scale. Yeah, I think it's really incredible that, you know, you guys are staying safe as you're working and collaborating on um, these robots and your innovations, and you're also kind of enabling others to stay safe um, by reducing possible in-person contact for people who do have to work at these uh, uh, warehouses where demand might really skyrocket within the next couple months. I think that's really incredible and uh, an awesome sort of uh, change that we can see in this world. Um, yeah, so now if you guys, uh, if what you guys have just said and uh, really speaks to individuals who might want to work with you as a potential client or maybe even want to join your team, uh, where are some places that they can look to get started on that? Yeah, they can just call my cell, 352. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just go to, um, just go to iamrobotics.com, iamrobotics.com. And uh, they could also follow us on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. So we're on all the social, the big social media platforms. Um, we're very active on those channels. And uh, we're really excited to meet new people and, and, and have them watch what we do because it's just the beginning. And so I uh, really appreciate your time, uh, Niharika, to, to give us this opportunity to, to talk with you today and, and uh, share our story. Thank you so much, Tom. Uh, this is really enlightening. Um, everyone at home can go check out I Am Robotics, a really incredible company doing some really amazing things. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you. Appreciate it.